We have a handful of world building tutorials on our channel, but we don't have so many that are mostly created inside of After Effects. So in this video, I wanna talk about how you can build your own motion graphics world building scene right here inside of After Effects. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Please be sure to smash that like button because those likes are helping out this channel so much. So please hit that like button. So let's jump in and let's talk about how we can put together these really cool motion graphic scenes that can be used for, you know, your explainer videos for clients, or if maybe you're producing educational content here on YouTube, which I would love to see. So be sure to link those in the description if you do that type of work, but let's jump in, let's get started. All right, so one thing I realized that not everyone's gonna create the same exact scene as I'm gonna create. So I wanna talk about the mindset and how you can put together your own scene, uh, and, you know, go through each of the steps. So we'll start with a blank composition. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is just set up the environment. So mostly the background or the sky, you know, any flooring, you know, foreground objects. Start with the basics, the shell. So we'll go ahead and go to layer, new solid, and we can just call it sky and i'm doing a night scene as you saw in my demo there so i'm gonna come here and just do a very dark blue kind of like so and click ok all right so i have this solid here next thing i want to create is this hill or the foreground land for my scene really easy to do we'll come here and i'm gonna grab the ellipse tool you can grab the pen tool to create your own shape or the rectangle tool if you want your land to be flat but i want to use the ellipse tool and i'm just going to come here and create ellipse like this and I'll come here to the fill here at the top and I'm going to keep the color that I have here, but you want to kind of keep it in the same shade. You want to know your color palette. So once again, mine seems a night scene, you know, it's going to be dark. You're not going to see the foreground. All right. So this doesn't look like much, but this is a great start because now we have the skeleton in the scene. The next thing we want to talk about is creating the central object of the scene. So the central object here is actually going to be the moon and then we can build off of this. So uh, go ahead and create your next central shape. So maybe it's a sky element. Uh, they create like a moon for example grab the lips tool again we'll change this color to white and you draw a perfect circle by holding down shift on your keyboard and i'll just make sure that this is in the center of our comp and i'll put this underneath our hill layer so boom you see that we have this uh layering this depth in here so then i can take my moon layer here and just duplicate it real quick by going up going up to edit duplicate and what i'll do is hit s on my keyboard for scale and i can scale this up and I'll hit T on my keyboard for opacity. I'll just lower the opacity. This will create layers uh, in the moon. And by creating these duplicates, you know, by scaling and lowering the opacity for each one, it's just gonna add a nice lighting effect to it. So now that we have the structure and a central object in here, we now have a you know point of reference to start creating other elements and knowing the scale and really start being creative. So I wanna add some clouds here as you see. And we're gonna create these directly here in After Effects because it's really easy to do this. So to create some clouds, you just grab the ellipse tool and you just draw a circle. And what I'm gonna do here is just draw out some more circles here in you know, random order, kind of like this. And I'm just gonna expand this out to fit up one side of our composition. These are nice, decent, medium-sized circles. All right, and when I'm happy with our cloud, I'm gonna bring it underneath our hill, you know, and I'll bring this down to kind of hide it as if it's peeking over the horizon like so. One thing we need to do is shade this with the rest of our scene. So I'll come here to Effect, uh, Generate, and we'll grab Gradient Ramp. And I'm gonna select a very you know nice kind of medium blue here and then go to the end of color and do a dark blue. And I'm gonna grab our start of color, bring it here at the top and bring our end of color and bring it here at the bottom and I'll darken this out even more. I think that's a good start for what we're doing here. And I'll composite this even further and put it underneath our moon. So that looks good. So now what we can do is we can duplicate this layer and we can bring it up. And one thing I want to want to do is hit U twice on my keyboard and I'll grab the lips here and just variate it, move it around and kind of change how things are positioned here. So the clouds don't look exactly the same. Now, one thing we need to do is go back to the bottom cloud layer and go to effect uh, perspective and add a drop shadow to this so we can break this up. We'll come in a direction, set this to zero degrees and we'll make sure the cloud layer is above cloud two. Perfect. Then we'll do take the softness and increase that by a little bit. And then we'll duplicate the drop shadow and increase the softness even more. And this will help create a little bit of depth between the clouds. And that's great. Then we'll just copy our drop shadows here and paste it to the next cloud layer. And then we'll go to effect color correction, brightness and contrast. And we'll bring down the brightness. So this will be a little bit darker. This way we'll continue to stack this on. Then we we'll take our cloud, duplicate it and just bring it forward. And again, you'll want to go ahead and variate those circles. And if you want, we'll take these clouds and we'll just move them over to the other side. So I understand that creating motion graphics can be time consuming and quite challenging if you're first starting out. That's why we've created a handful of packs on our website. And specifically, I wanna take a look at the motion graphics professionals pack right here for After Effects. 
So this is our motion graphic extension with 1400 templates in it, which has all the templates you need to put together any project that you're working on. So as you can see, we can hover over a template and apply a template that we want. And it applies a quick animation to our project. We can go into that template and quickly change the parameters and in this case, the text. And we can quickly change the colors however we see fit. And it'll update in your main composition and we can take the scene even further with some of our high tech elements or specifically some cool animated backgrounds in here. And we quickly apply these. And with both our elements here, we have a full composition just by using two templates in this pack. So if you're looking to save time and produce awesome work within just a matter of minutes, you can take a look at any of the packs we have off our website. I will link them below. If you do pick up anything, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. And we have a free pack of our extension with 40 templates in it. So if you want to try our templates for free, I will link that in the description as well. All right, so obviously this scene doesn't look anywhere near the final result where it's nice and gritty. We have these details in here. Um, but we're very close to finishing this out, believe it or not. We just, need add, we just need to add a few elements in here. First thing I want to talk about is the blending, the shading of the scene. Uh, so all the assets look really good together. So we'll start doing that now. So what I'm going to do is go to layer new uh, solid. And I'm going to select the color of the hill that we have here. And I'm going to call this layer vignette. And from here, I'm just going to draw out an ellipse right from the center. Hold down uh, shift and control. And then I'm going to set the mass to subtract and I'm going to do a mass feather here and increase the mass feather way up. And I can also open up the mass one, come here to the mass expansion and go ahead and increase that by a little bit. And this will kind of just narrow in on the scene like so. And I think that looks great. And we'll grab this vignette layer and we'll bring it underneath our moon. And, you know, this will help blend the edges together and kind of get all the colors closer together. And I think this looks great for this scene in particular, but it's up to you. So I want to add some other quick elements here. So you got to have some stars you know, or some particles or something in the scene to kind of help, you know, break up the mood. So what we'll do is go, go ahead and create another solid. We'll make sure the color is white and we'll click OK. Then we'll go to effect and we're going to grab simulation and we're going to grab CC star burst. And we'll bring down the size of this so it'll be a little bit smaller. And we can bring down the speed to zero. Now we'll come into grid spacing. We'll set this up to like 15. That'll kind of make the stars a little bit bigger and spread it apart. And we'll make sure this particle layer is underneath our hill here so we don't see that. Start. And we can decrease the number of particles here by going ahead and increasing the scatter of this. All right, so this come here to effect stylize. We'll grab glow and we'll duplicate this effect and we'll set the glow radius up to 80. All right, cool. And let's create an adjustment layer. Go to layer new adjustment. And we'll go to effect noise and grain. We'll add noise to this. And we'll set the noise amount up to 12% and uncheck use color noise. And this will just help add that grittiness to the scene so it's not perfectly clean or static. Okay, so sometimes you have to add some objects into your scene that you necessarily cannot create an After Effects, or at least it won't make sense to do so. Uh, so we have Adobe Illustrator here, and there's some assets that I want to grab. Now, where I grab these elements are from a free place called freepix.com. I'll link it in the description where you can download any free vector that you want. Uh, you can go ahead and search it in there. Uh, but we can take elements from these scenes uh, and bring them over to After Effects. So go ahead and download those assets, and you can open up those files inside of Adobe Illustrator. And this is just a quick step. So all we need to do is find where those objects are at so we can hover over this. And you know, I click the scene open up the layers here. Uh, we can see, hey, the deer or elk asset here is in that layer. So what I'll do is make sure that this layer is selected or a group, should I say. And I'm gonna go and copy it, Control C, go to File, New. I'm gonna create a new document, just 1920 by 1080 is okay, Create. And I'm just gonna paste that copied asset into here. And I'm just gonna go to File, Save. And I'll go ahead and name it elk.ai. Uh, and click on save and same thing with the tree asset so we want to add some trees in here i came to this one i found this tree layer inside of this asset so i just went through the layers here and as we've done before you know we'll just go ahead and you know select that tree by clicking right there and you can copy it and paste it over to your new document and after you save these elements in adobe illustrator you can now import them into after effects very easily just like that so we have the dot ai's here inside of after effects so we'll want to go ahead and start bringing some of these assets in here so i'll go ahead and bring this tree layer into our composition right on top of that hill layer and one thing we'll do is we'll go to effect generate fill and we'll go ahead and select the same color as our hill so you can see this kind of all fits the color palette and now we can quickly take this asset and move it somewhere randomly in our scene. Now, before I go ahead and start duplicating this, I want to get the animation out of the way because it's easier to duplicate this with animation. 
So we'll do a very simple animation. We're gonna grab the puppet pin tool here at the top. We'll double click our layer here. And all I'm gonna do is click a point here at the top and I'll come here kind of towards the bottom. And I'll do one more point here at the bottom. So we'll have three points. And I'll grab this top point and I'll just kind of move it over here to the right. It's because we're gonna just create some physics with the wind. Move forward to four seconds. And then I'll just have this come over to the left side like so. Then I'll hit U on my keyboard to bring the keyframes. We'll see that we have our two keyframes here. I'll alt click the stopwatch and I'm gonna type in the expression in a loop out. So we'll continue this animation on forever just like this. Capital O, you do the quotations. You'll type out ping pong, quotations, and close parentheses just like that. So make sure your expression looks like mine and this animation will go on forever. So now we have the opportunity to take this asset, duplicate it, and move around our composition. You know, scale it down if you want to by hitting S on my keyboard. And we'll just go ahead and create multiple copies of this and fill out the scene. And you can add other trees in here or other elements to variate it. Okay, so now we have our trees in here with the animation. It's gonna look great. And now we wanna maybe import one final element. So we have this, you know, main character, if you will, of the scene. You can bring this in here. And as before, we'll go ahead and copy that fill effect and paste it onto the main character or whatever. So it fits the color palette of our scene, which is very important. Um, and we can just position this here in our scene easily. I could also use the Sunduck logo here, which, you know, I think looks pretty cute, you know? <laughs> anyway, we won't do that. And, you know, as before, we can grab our main character layer and we can grab the pup pin tool and we can animate this however we see fit, whatever makes sense for what you're doing, but we just want to isolate, you know, very specific areas. So maybe I'm just going to animate the head just like that and I'll go forward and again and bring it across. And I can go ahead and do the loop out animation or the expression one more time. And you know, now we're gonna have this animation on our, you know, our elk or deer or moose. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so now we have this really subtle animation in here. It looks great. Now we gotta talk about group animation because we gotta do some of these clouds and I guess the moon here. It can be a little bit exaggerated for the animation, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna file new null object. And we'll grab all of our moon layers and we'll grab the pick whip, parent it to the null. And we'll go here to the beginning. Hit P on keyboard for position. We add a keyframe for this. We'll move forward to the end, say 10 seconds. And we can like animate our moon to go upward. So there'll be some movement in our scene. I think that looks great. All right. And now for the clouds, you know, what we want to do is just be able to quickly copy paste some keyframes here. And so what we'll do here is we'll grab every other layer here. So we'll grab these three like this and bring up position. We'll add a keyframe for these go to 10 seconds and we can just move these clouds in one direction like so then we'll come here to the beginning grab the other three layers that we didn't animate and we'll hit position and we'll animate these to go in the opposite direction so there'll be a little bit of contrasting animation maybe it doesn't make sense but it's up to you and when it's all said and done you can have a really cool scene like this remember to take the individual concepts and be able to build your own scene but this is each step that you should go through to help you you know materialize the world that you want to build. So there's another world building tutorial done. You can create pretty much whatever you want right inside of After Effects and maybe bring in a few elements here and there uh, to save some time on the design. But overall, I really just love doing this stuff. It's fun to do. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we're gonna post multiple post-production tutorials every single week right here on the channel. You can also hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are below. And always be creative.